For those who don't know my story, when I was 12 years old, I was diagnosed with Tourette's and I was on medication for almost 10 years. When I was 21, I learned something called The Secret and I came off the medication overnight against everyone telling me to stay on it and I had a spiritual awakening. I meditated for three weeks straight and my Tourette's disappeared and I created the podcast to simply preach about everything that most people have in their head but no one ever speaks about, which is what the twitching was. It was too many thoughts inside my head and now I have a platform where I can speak to people and they can get out what's in their head so if i could ask a massive favor from all my listeners upon looking at my stats recently it has occurred that out of a very humbling 730,000 downloads since i created the podcast back in 2019 that only 10 percent of you that listen have actually followed and subscribed to the podcast if i could ask a massive favor from you all that listen if you wouldn't mind just hitting that follow and subscribe button It would mean more than you can imagine and it really does help the show grow and help reach more people in more ways than you and I can even imagine. The bigger the podcast gets, the bigger the guests get. And my aim is to grow the show big enough that I can reach out to amazing people like Russell Brand, Joe Dispenza, Lewis Howes, Grant Cardone, Joe Rogan and have deep, intimate and vulnerable one-to-one conversations with them. I want to speak to the human side of people to show we are all the same when you get to the core regardless of how much money or fame you have. Right, back to the podcast with Morgan. Morgan, um, click on my name and press join as a guest. And then I'll let you into the call. Join as a guest, Morgan. Join as a guest, Morgan. Right. Any minute now, Morgan will be joining. Okay, Morgan, um, press join as a guest and then we're on. Oh, who's who's requested to be a guest? Morgan Millard. What a name. Millard. Yo. Hello. Right, how you doing? I'm honestly a beautiful mess. Right, tell me. My brother, my friend. I am going through an early, early breast cancer screening process as well as fertility screening process. Wow. Okay. Um, So what, talk to me more. So what made you get checked? Is that the right, right, right thing to say or, or what? Talk. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I love my body. (laughs) I've been taking the best care of it for quite a few years that I possibly can be. And part of that is a woman, you know, I do my regular breast massage and just make sure that they're, the energy's flowing because breasts, they're mostly, you know, filled with lymph nodes and stuff. And so we've got to create drainage by massage and stuff like that. So. I was massaging my breast sometime in November and I discovered two masses that hadn't been there the last time that I massaged them. And I've just been, you know, working to address them since. Of course, we're out here in America where you have to afford health. (laughs) Um, So I've been, you know, I insurance plan and all that kind of stuff but it's really set up to be pretty difficult for us out here as women to tend to our health through the health system Um, but of course if there's serious issues we want to know what's wrong for me I want to know what's wrong and the western medicine can help me know you know what needs to be addressed but I would still 
address it holistically as absolutely holistically and through naturopathy and all of that. But yeah, so I, um, I've just been addressing that for the last five months and I finally am getting in for a mammogram and it took five months, five months for them to get me in for a mammogram. So it's not actually, um, confirmed that is anything is it or or is it it's not quite i had an ultrasound a couple of months ago um and the radiologist then was like i can't confirm that these are benign we need we need better imaging um and then the doctor that i just saw the other day like two days ago um she let me know that she thinks that uh, there's going to be a biopsy that they're going to want, even with a mammogram. So, so are you saying that if you massage breast, it kind of, um, kind of prevents cancer in some way, or it reduces it reduces cancer by moving? It definitely around. can. Hello, you're yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's definitely really important for breast health to massage the breasts. And it's also, the breasts are really closely related to the lungs and the heart. And so it's actually really beneficial for your heart health as well as a woman to massage your breasts. Would you say that's the same for men and um, testicular cancer? Massaging balls is good. Probably. I mean, but I'm not too familiar with like the lymphatic system. I'm that's definitely a, a huge factor, but I would say that it's probably really important for men to also massage their own chests because I'm sure that there's a need for support in lymphatic drainage in, in everybody. So are you saying that um you could say cancer is created by a buildup of lymphatic fluids and therefore draining the fluids make it uh reduced is that what you're saying that yes and no um there's obviously multiple ways that cancer can form however a unhealthy lymphatic system is one of them yes so obviously Though, you see well, so for me, it's not it's not so much my lymphatic system that needs to be addressed. It's more so my hormones. So to me, obviously, you are a very spiritually in tune, healthy, positive person. So it always inter interests me when someone who is very in tune with their body also is affected by what this is called as disease when the body is at ease. So what do you think that has caused this in terms of hormonally so stress diet or something else combination of mostly stress and diet um which i could definitely go into um if that's if you want yeah of course yeah like i believe you know a body at ease technically can't be dizzy so obviously there's always a reason or something that's happening if you're saying it's stress and diet please tell me um that Morgan? Morgan, I can't hear you if you're talking. <laughs> Hello? There you are. Okay, here's some sound. Right, get me back. Go on. Right, I can't hear you again. <laughs> can you hear me now? There. I can hear you. Yeah, I can okay. now. Okay. Well, I guess we are across the Atlantic Ocean from each other, so... Yeah, we can't expect technology to be in our favor all the time. <laughs> um, so I missed probably at least like 30 seconds, if 30 seconds. Okay, explain your diet and stress situation the last six months, which you think would have contributed to the situation. It's a build up. It's definitely so it's it's a combination right of diet and stress for me i know most certainly that's really all it could be um but diet 
going all the way back to like before I started taking really good care of myself. And even in the beginning when I thought I was taking really good care of myself, I might have still been doing more harm than good because, you know, I wasn't a dietitian, And so it took me probably four years of being really committed to my health to actually understand what a healthy diet for my body looks like. Um, but you know, growing up on really, really processed foods as a child. So the foundation of my nutrients growing up pretty much didn't exist. And then at a really young age, but also really common for girls and boys developed an eating disorder. So I had anorexic bulimia for like eight years. And that was mostly during puberty. Um, so following up the food that I did eat was only processed. And then I was starving myself and throwing up constantly. Um, and so all the way to 18, I'm still living in nutritional deficit. I've probably never been out of nutritional deficit. Maybe when I was a baby and I was still feeding from my mom, but even still her diet wasn't very clean and probably full of nutrients. So, um, so then, you know, I'm 18 and I, that's when I wake up. And one of the first things that I do is go vegan. And very shortly after I go, you know, completely organic vegan. And that's great. I have opportunity to really clear all of the chemicals out for the most part. I would say almost, you know, maybe all the chemicals over a few years. I'm my body is pretty clean. However, it's not it's not any longer the the processed food that's an issue. It's so then I'm vegan at 18 and then around 20, 21, I'm vegan and I'm intermittent fasting. And I'm intermittent fasting for years. And so now put me at 24 and I have been living in nutritional deficit for my entire life. So that's a huge, huge factor in my hormone health. And beside, you know, the, the breast concerns, I've also got concerns with my menstrual cycle. So I'm getting things checked pretty much across the board to make sure that I'm even fertile and, you know, make sure that I've got everything that I need to have going on inside of my body to actually be healthy because our hormones are one of the most important things that we need to be taking care of. And they're also one of the first things that's being impacted by stress and diet. Um, and so yeah. We, please go. Um, go on. No, go you. So, so I can um, answer all of it in one go, right? Um, now go over to the stress part as well. Explain the stress part and why you were stressed and how the stress was affecting your sleep, mood, diet, and how long that was going on for. Mm. Well, the stress definitely started really early. I mean, I could say before the eating disorder developed, uh, I... I've always been a really sensitive person, you know, in like therapy world right now, they call us highly sensitive people for years. We've been calling ourselves empaths. You know, we all can feel things around us. Some of us just feel things more intensely. And so as a child, I was, you know, I experienced heaps of anxiety. Um, and that really continued. And the lack of nutrient in my life didn't help me to be able to process things properly. You know what I mean? Because we need the biochemistry to be able to handle certain stress. Like if we are lacking nutrients and we go through a stressful experience, like our body's got nothing to support that processing, right? And we're also not really taught or even encouraged to 
know how to process things, especially strong emotions and such. And so, you know, I dealt with a lot of emotional stress at a really, really young age. And when I woke up and I Uh, Morgan, wait there one sec. You've cut out. Hang on. I can't hear you. He went all robotic. Just uh, wait there one sec. And hopefully it will resume. Wait there one second. Because I can't hear you. Still can't. Keep trying to talk and then hopefully it will come back. As you say, we are across the world, and this shit is going to happen. Although, it doesn't normally happen. I have to admit, this doesn't normally happen this much. It must be your it's energy. It's going to be pretty vulnerable. This is some some real-life stuff. Um, you know, being... Right, so... Hang on, so I didn't get the last 30 seconds because it... Um, it out. Oh, okay. Um, so, pretty much wrapping up the last 30 seconds was like, the amount of stress that we experience as children in especially the state that the world is in, you know, I had a lot, a lot of stress in my childhood and it continued definitely in my, in my adulthood. And it started around 18. It was kind of like the, one of the first really big traumas that I had. Well, I attempted suicide when before this happened and attempting suicide is definitely traumatizing. Um, but then I'm 18 and the first trauma that I had of somebody, you know, harming me was, you know, I was strangled when I was breaking up with somebody. Um, and I, you know, I, I processed it pretty well and continued on with my life. And then more traumas were happening. There was one of them was when there was um, a, an attempted gang rape on me. And I happened to be so tuned in that I literally heard like the voice of my angels or something telling me like, you have to run right now or you're pretty much done for. Um, and another one was uh, where I, <laughs> I put myself in a vulnerable situation um, and it, it didn't turn out good. And I, again, ran for my life. Um, so I run, I've literally run for my life on multiple occasions. You know, I, jeopardized my own life a couple of times when I was younger and I thought I wanted to kill myself. So an accumulation of that, those kinds of really more significant major traumas that it, there's no real timeline. We can't say how long it's going to take for our nervous systems to fully process and release that information. And then um, with my breasts specifically, I, in 2021, decided that I wanted to go for something that I had wanted since I was a kid. And I didn't even, it didn't even exist when I was a kid. And I just like prayed that it would exist because um, I, so essentially what I'm talking about is I, wanted to have larger breasts. I knew when I was a little girl that the chances of breasts growing really large was pretty slim. Uh, and so I would like pray to God that my boobs would grow. And I prayed that there would be a way if they didn't grow where I could like put real fat into them because I never wanted to have, you know, like plastic inside of my body basically. Um, and so they've come to develop a procedure where you can transfer your own fat from one part of your body into another part of your body. And I decided I wanted to go for it. And I thought that I was 
um, I thought I understood the process well enough and I trusted the doctors and whoa, <laughs> the doctor who did my procedure, he was let go before he could even do a three month follow up. So I have pretty, to me, it's really significant. Most people don't know it even exists, but I have got a lot of scar tissue in my abdomen, in my arms, um, because they pulled just the little bit of fat that I had from my abdomen and arms to place into my breasts. Um, but the doctor, he just really, he did not handle my body with care. And so now I've got some really significant physical trauma on top of all the other stresses and lack of, you know, proper nutrients growing up. And so I've, you know, I've been freaking, <laughs> I, last year I like tripled my caloric intake and I was eating more food than I ever had in my entire life. I would probably eat more in a day than I would eat regularly in one week. Um, but I so, still, <clears throat> yeah, I still have, I still have more to address. The, the eating more food is not gonna necessarily be the solution. So that's kind of where I'm at. So do you think that having this procedure co directly caused the, um, whatever you want to call it, cancer scare? Or did it just add it like the cherry on top? Or do you think it's specifically because of that, that it's that directly come from that? Like it's, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard to say. There's a part of me that thinks that the procedure would, could you know, could be the leading factor but also with what's been going on with my menstruation i can't say for certain there's another part of me that thinks that maybe there was something going on that i wouldn't have been so concerned about if i hadn't gotten the procedure and maybe having the procedure brought even more of my attention to these areas that i might have been kind of ignoring yeah um um, 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 have you ever been on any contraception, any contraception, like the pill? Or yeah, the when I was in high school for like two years, I was on the pill, but I stopped taking it really early. You see, as good as it is for men, it is just, it's horrendous for, for the woman's body. I mean, I understand yeah. it, but it's good for the guy. It's fucking awful for the woman. It's, you, you might as well sniff cocaine it's, it's probably worse than cocaine because at least you know once you get that high and you know after a few weeks your body might remove all the toxins and shit from it but the pill essentially affects nature and takes control of nature and does the opposite of nature which mm -hmm. has long lasting effects and so many people and girls are getting on it at school and some people are on it for years and years and years to help with period pains and it's like they don't understand what is what's going on and it's like vaping. People aren't doing it long enough to really know the effects. It's only really been around for like properly last 20, 30, 40 years maybe. So people don't really understand what happens over time. The same as stress and diet. We live this life where there's just food everywhere you go. There's KFC, there's pizza, there's chicken, there's vegan this, vegan that, nuts, berries, for every fruit, every root in the world. And we're just flooding our body with the wrong food and in terms of the stress even just being a little anxious when you're crossing the road makes your heartbeat increase which it, it produces adrenaline and cortisol which can stay in your body for hours and hours and hours one argument right mm -hmm. can create enough cortisol that will stay in your body for hours so if you imagine that people argue at every couple of hours it means that the body never has a chance to recover from all these toxic negative chemicals because they're always in that fight or flight mode and i when i was growing up used to be so angry uh, with the world and couldn't get what i wanted and i was trapped inside my hair with threats and that and i remember what it felt like to always be angry and tense and stressed and my heartbeats a pound and now i make sure that even if i'm 
getting slightly agitated, say, if the waiter is taking their time to bring the food over, I'll become aware and I'll let it go. It's almost like my heartbeat has to constantly be below a certain beats per minute unless I'm doing an exercise. Because if it's anything more, I know this small amount of stress isn't just affecting me now, it's affecting me for the rest of the day. And collectively, this will become a massive issue in my body, the same as the nutrient side of things. Now, I fast every day. I intermittent fast till 12 o'clock. But the first meal I have is fats. It's keto diet. It's nuts. It's berries. It's salmon. It's egg. It's avocado. It's fats. So I know that my body can fast because it's getting the nutrients. Well, in your situation, the vegan diet lacks mm-hmm. nutrients anyway. So in with the fact that you're not really eating for quite a while and then when you do eat you're eating what i like to call fluff right man-made <laughs> fucking la- laboratory fluff aka mushroom chicken flavoring i mean that's not in the natural kingdom in the natural kingdom every animal even insects maybe has another living animal for dinner mm-hmm. you know most most of those animals and so they use a certain amount of nutrition and then you add the fact that the vegan diet doesn't really have much nutrition. And then, yeah, over time, your body will malfunction. And um, I was going to say to end that. Um, yeah, so so do you think that if you were to consider um, the whole duration of your childhood with the stress and the diet, and then the fact that you became aware at, say, 18 and changed it, can four years of changing that diet overall significantly 18 years of stress and shitty diet i man with i would say i would say no i i would say that from like a childhood full of stress and subtle traumas and big traumas because like you said, it could, it could literally be you're getting ready to walk across the street or taking a turn on the road and seeing another car drive by extra fast. You know, that stuff, <clears throat> the body doesn't differentiate like, oh, this is just minor stress versus this is like major trauma. It's just going to produce the right amount of chemicals, you know, per scenario. So we've got plenty of little traumas built up over time. Um, I think if you're, if you're trying to recover from, from that kind of stuff coming into maybe your early adulthood or whenever you choose to that the way that I did it was not the way to do it. I, you know, especially with being vegan. Now I think that having proper education on cellular health, metabolic health, hormonal health, um, actual nutritional value, understanding where our food's growing, making sure that it's growing in soil that actually has nutrient. Because even still, we can think that we're eating super healthy because, because our food's organic and maybe we're eating meats and fish and all of that stuff. But, um, so much of our food is lacking true nutritional value. And so if you're recovering from burnout from your childhood, veganism and intermittent fasting, especially while being vegan. Now, if you're doing more ketosis type stuff with the intermittent fasting, that's so much better. Um, But we cannot just follow trends. We have to do our proper research, understand our own biological cellular functions um, and make sure that we're addressing things with um, with not just fluff, (laughs) some like real structural Ah. healing. Um, I wonder how many vegans in time will um, become unvegan. Obviously, a lot of vegans, it comes from animals and loving nature and whatever, you know. But I wonder at what point vegans will change their mind on veganism based on the fact that, yeah, you're, you're not eating animals and stuff. But in terms of your own health and survival, you're not really doing yourself much, much good. Now, 
you can have a vegan diet and not have any man-made vegan stuff. You can more just have and more vegetables. people. Yeah, you can have vegetables and nuts and fruits and really you don't even need to have like corn, chicken, nuggets because it's vegan because there's plenty of food out there that's uh, not animal and completely natural. So I'd say that you'd have all the nutrition's, nutritious foods that you possibly could ever want. Like, it's in abundance, like everything you want out there. Um, but in terms of boycotting the vegan industry, which is fake, processed, man-made stuff in replacement of meat, at what point do you reckon people are going to be like, man, fuck this? <laughs> Well, and it's funny to me, too, because, you know, a lot of people think that these processed vegan foods are better for themselves and the planet, but most of it's actually worse for both. Yeah, there was a person on Pitbull who she, he was interviewing, and um, she was she was vegan, and she was saying how she eats honey and avocado, and Piers Morgan says, you do realize how many birds and animals and bees and whatever are destroyed getting avocados and getting honey and she was uh, in denial about that and it's interesting because it's the majority of it's, it's like it's, it's the the overall reason of why you do something so i don't believe that say peers should challenge her because you know vegans are helping the planet and they're not eating animals etc so you shan't you can't take somebody down and say well you're eating avocados and honey, which is affecting bees and animals. So clearly, you know, you don't care about the animals. It's like the, the over, overall of what you're trying to do. You're trying to be a better person. Um, 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 what am I going with this? Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you, you take over. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, let's, are you open to kind of shifting topics a little bit? Absolutely. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. 